Hey yo, what is up guys? Your boy is back and I have uh, another video. It's not really a review. I'm just talking about a show that happened probably 20 years ago. So WrestleMania 19, it was a really, really awesome show. And yeah, it's considered to be one of the best WrestleManias of all time. I remember, so I was really little when this show aired and... Yeah, so I didn't actually watch it when it happened. I watched a lot of these matches when I was about 13, when I was like, got really, really into pro wrestling again. So yeah, this is one of the, like, where I just like, they had all the matches on YouTube and I just watched them all part by part, baby. So yeah, we're just gonna be going through like my, the matches I watched that I was able to watch as a kid that I, for the show. So I think I probably watched most of these all in like one go. So Let's talk about it. Obviously, I watched The Undertaker versus A Train and Big Show match. I'm a big Undertaker fan, and especially as a kid, and watching all the streak matches. I had to see all the streak matches. So, this is one of them. I believe this is what put Undertaker to 11 and 0, if I'm not mistaken. I think 10 and 0 was Flair, and then this was 11 and 0. And this was just kind of like a, it was a decent match. It was nothing special, nothing really too memorable. Uh, what was mostly memorable was Undertaker, was Limp Biscuit playing Undertaker to the ring here. Um, yeah, so Undertaker, he used some MMA moves. I think he broke out an arm bar in this match. Uh, he used some other thing. Oh, what the frick was it? Yeah, but it was mostly kind of uh, a train and big show kind of just dominating the Undertaker. Undertaker would try and fight back until the end when who was it was it was it Matt Morgan I think it was Matt Morgan I want to say that's what it was who it was but there was like this time period back in like 03 04 there was this like generic big guy in the WWE generic big boy and like Matt Morgan was just like one of the generic big guys who just like looked super plain but was just really jacked so they looked like a creator wrestler so yeah, uh, Big Show and A-Train, they're good wrestlers, but it was just kind of like, whatever. Big Show was really quite athletic in this match. He did some pretty cool, like, he was a lot more mobile back here in 2003. It was like before he got like really big and he probably was 500 pounds in about 2005. So here he was still pretty movable, mobile, but yeah, it lacked a lot of the emotion of the early, like of the later streak matches. There was no real, like, uh, not necessarily like, oh, like, it just, it, the streak wasn't really what it was that in like 12, 2012, 2011, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, it lacked a lot of that emotion. So, but they did mention it at the end of like Undertaker 11 to know at WrestleMania. So it is cool. They were taking note of that at the time. So next up, and this is actually one of my favorite matches of all time. And those of you who've seen the show, you all know what match stole the show and you all know what match I'm going to talk about and obviously who's involved here. And that's Shawn Michaels versus Chris Jericho, WrestleMania 19. I love this match. I could watch this match any day. It was on the Shawn Michaels My Journey DVD. And I actually, that video, I've reviewed it. It's up on an other, another YouTube channel. Uh, Slam Down Talk WC, I think. It's up on that channel. Back when I tried doing like a YouTube wrestling group channel. Odd, I know, I was a strange 16 year old. No girls, all wrestling, all day, baby. <laughs> uh, yeah, but the matches were, were, were so great. The, the entrances, Shawn Michaels' entrance was just so cool on how he's like shooting off the confetti and some of them aren't even working. And he's like, oh, well, sorry guys. And he's like praying like, oh, please let this one work. And he shoots it off. Yeah, so yeah, this match here, it told just such a great story with Shawn Michaels being uh, essentially... Well, really, Chris Jericho being Shawn Michaels' light, right? So Chris Jericho is trying to break from being Shawn Michaels. I don't want to be the next Shawn Michaels. I'm the first Chris Jericho. That really awesome story. And yeah, it really paid off in the match where they do like the kickups and they have like the chain wrestling early on and like Shawn Michaels is kind of getting ahead of them. And yeah, and like Chris Jericho having to try and cheat to keep ahead of Shawn Michaels and just do all these little tactics and stuff. And it was just a super, super competitive athletic match here. I love this match. Like, I just, I can't even, like, it's one of my all-time favorite matches. It's, like, it's just such a great match, and I just love it so much. And I could watch it all day, every day. You should go watch it if you haven't seen it. I mean, it, it's sad to think it happened 20 years ago. And, like, Shawn Michaels has been retired. Now he just looks like an old man. And 
yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's just such a great match. And, like, this is like, just when Shawn Michaels was coming back. And just to come out here and have a performance like this is just so awesome. And I'm so happy I get to talk about Shawn Michaels' matches. Like, I don't get to talk about these matches enough, but you know how we do. We're going to keep it rolling, baby. All right, so now that I gushed all over the Shawn Michaels-Chris Jericho match, here's one of the strangest... Okay, I should probably... Back on this this channel, back when I was about 6, 15, I made a top 10 my favorite wrestling matches of all time. Oh, I mean, this is just so cringe that this match made it. I just, I had no, that I put this match in my top 10. For some reason, I put this match in my top 10 favorite matches. Triple H versus Booker T. Okay, okay, everyone put the pitchforks down. I was like, I was a, I was a dumb teenager. Okay, please put the pitchforks down. Anyways, so... Yeah, we'll just, the storyline leading into this, we all know, I don't really want to get into it too much. Triple H saying the stuff that he did and then obviously winning the match like he did with the pedigree and just like Booker T, T lies there for 20 minutes before he covers him and yeah. But the match between that was quite good. The commentary, like you really, really wanted to see Booker T win. JR was really behind him and the king was constantly just kicking him while he was down and yeah so this match it had some really really good wrestling moments like booker t's leg drop off the top rope is so cool that's one of my like favorite wrestling moves that just looks so brutal when it landed just looks like it just killed him and like that could have been like the end of that should have been the end of the match right there but obviously it wasn't uh triple h breaking out the indian death lock uh the whole reason about this match is that Triple H was going to face Goldberg later on that year and he didn't want to look weak. So just dumb, but like, whatever. This is Triple H's reign of terror. Uh, yeah, I just, it's not like a bad wrestling match. It's just the storyline of it, which again, was really cutting edge for its time. I do agree. Like it was a very, very cutting edge story to do something like that. And, but it just had the very wrong outcome. <laughs> uh yeah anyways that's what i'll say about that match i don't really want to get into it anymore next up another a match that oddly enough doesn't really get talked about but it happened and no one really mentions it hulk hogan versus vince mcmahon uh in a street fight this is a really interesting match um uh, they start off they have like their little wrestling in the ring and then they break out to the outside and they start brawling around out there uh yeah, Vince Mc... They both bleed all over the place in this match. It's just a massive gusher. Uh, yeah, just... And then Vince McMahon hits a freaking flying leg drop off the off the ladder onto the announce table. And yeah, this match was just a bloodbath. One of the most bloody matches you'll ever see, really. Uh, Vince, he looks so stiff in his back. You know, like they're moving... They both... They just look so stiff in this match. And they're like, just a couple... Yeah, I was waiting for them to break up the rocking chair or the uh, the freaking walking sticks and stuff to help help them get moving. So, yeah, this was definitely they did they did they look stiff. Obviously, they're older, but it was really entertaining for what it was. Uh, Roddy Piper comes out at the end and he uh, hits. I think he hits them both. He kind of like goes after both of them and then he hits uh, Hulk Hogan in the head with a lead pipe. Hulk Hogan hulks up big boot like hits three leg drops on vince mcmahon and there you go hulk hogan created hulk hogan i guess was the point of the story i think <laughs> anyways yeah a really good solid match here uh, i liked it i always thought it was quite entertaining so yeah uh next up a match that most people didn't know was going to be steve austin's last match i don't think it was actually built as that it just kind of like he was Austin went out there wrestled had his last match and yeah it's kind of amazing after my 2002 pay-per-view review that uh I never actually mentioned the boat talked about like Austin or anything because he wasn't on that show I don't think and yeah I can't even remember when he really came back I want to say it was later in 02 and I can't remember if he how many matches he had in 2003 late 2002 there but yeah it's just kind of interesting because you don't really like. I don't really. I don't. I don't really watch too much from that time. I should. I sometimes will. I watch a lot of Eddie Guerrero and stuff. But yeah, I have to go and see what Steve Austin was doing up at this time. But yeah. So again, he has his feud with The Rock. Rock, you beat me twice at WrestleMania, and he was doing his whole Hollywood Rock gimmick because he was again doing like Scorpion King. And this is right before he left for Hollywood. He he was still around for 
another month after this. And then he took off to go do some Hollywood, came back the next year. And yeah, so the rock and Austin, they come out here. Uh, this is like the end of the attitude era kind of style match. You're like the two biggest stars are pretty much both on their way out. And yeah, they both put on an absolute clangor. This was a really, really competitive match. The first like 10 minutes of it, it wasn't, I don't think it's as long as their 17 match or 15 match, but they both just brawl it out. And then yeah, Austin just sickest punches, amazing. I love that Luthez press that he has. And then just stomping away on the rock, the rock puts on his vest and he has the vest on for like half the ma Austin's vest on for like half the match. And he gets, he has him like the sharpshooter at one point. Uh, Steve, they, they trade finishers where like the stone cold hits the rock bottom. The rock hits the stone cold stunner. And then the match pretty much ends with the rock just constantly hitting rock bottoms on Steve Austin, just trying to put, put the old rattlesnake down. And yeah, finally the rock gets his victory over Steve Austin here. And it's really kind of sad, like looking back on it. Cause it's like, this is the last time these guys had a match like pretty much at the end of their careers. I know Austin came back last year. I know the rock came back in like 2012, but like, this is really like the end of their full time run. If that makes any sense was like, especially how the rock really went out for the WWE the, the following year and like really carry putting the company on his back the year prior uh, in 2002 there. So yeah, it's just kind of, it's great for the rock, uh, but like sad at the same time and kind of look back at it and say, Oh, this is, this is an end of an era kind of tight match here. So yeah, really good match here. I really liked it. Next up, la last match I'll talk about here is Brock Lesnar versus Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle and Brock Lesnar went out here and had an amateur classic in the in a pro wrestling ring, and it was awesome. Chris, Kurt Angle got him in like a bone arrow stretch, and it, that just looked amazing. And he hit this suplex. And he just sent Brock flying all over the place. He had a suplex to him in the corner. Yeah, I think Brock kind of dominated early and then Kurt Angle, he took the advantage out of him ever since that suplex into the corner. Brock was just constantly fighting from under, fighting from under. And he just had him just some brutal looking submissions and wrestling holds and stuff. And it's like, ugh, stew hard, eat your heart out, baby, <laughs> is really what this was. Uh, yeah, we, ha we have to talk about it. We have to talk about it. So Brock Lesnar hits uh, amazing F5 on Kurt Angle. And Kurt Angle's on the other side of the ring and then Brock climbs the turnbuckle. And even when I was a kid watching this, I'm like, damn, Kurt Angle's really far away. Like I'd never seen this match, but I was like, I don't know what Brock's going to do, but he looks really far away. Like, I don't know. I'm, I'm sitting there watching this on my freaking iPod sitting on the stairs in the basement <laughs> as, as I, as one does and I'm just watching that man, Brock, just so far away. He's so far away. Next thing you see, he does this flip. And he just lands right on his head. And I was like, whoa, yeah, he was far away. And then, yeah. Anyways, so somehow Brock managed to recover after this and hit another F5 and win his second WWE champion. And yeah, you have to say Brock, he had an amazing, amazing run in his first run in WWE. Think about it. The Rock, Undertaker, Kurt Angle, like all these just superstars Brock Lesnar wrestled on his way through. And he was so new and having that WrestleMania main event at that time. And yeah, just the young Brock Lesnar, way different from the Brock of today. Just really, really awesome wrestler. So yeah, both guys were actually like almost dead after this match. This is the match that's like infamous in a sense because it almost killed both Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle. They said had Brock Lesnar not done so much neck stretches and neck workouts he would have died from that so it's really good and wrestling literally saved brock's life so that's what we should remember about wrestlemania 19 anyways star ratings for this will be in the description obviously if you guys want to check that out and yeah i'm going to be doing wrestlemania 29 next week i'm really sorry about my upload schedule lately guys i've just been super exhausted with stuff so yeah anyways peace out